Hello and welcome to the Middle School Bookmarker Show. My name is Chris. And I'm Joellen. We're teachers reading the middle school novel Seed Folks by Paul Fleischman. Today we're finishing the book with chapter 13 and then we're going to discuss some big questions about the whole book. If you have not finished the book, you should go back and do that now and then come listen to our conversation about it. And by the way, we're going to get this whole show wrapped up in just 11 minutes because 11 minutes is all you need to... <sighs> Say goodbye to our old friend, Garbage Fridge. Goodbye, Garbage Fridge. <laughs> the first chapter we start off with, or the only chapter we're reading today, is Florence. And Florence describes her great-grandparents at the beginning of her chapter. They were freed slaves who moved to Colorado to start a new life. We find out that the origin of the whole name of the book actually relates to Florence and her grandparents, she called them and other people called them seed folks because they started the family tree when they started a new life. Yeah, that's neat. And Florence says that the Gibbs Street gardeners that she watches and walks by are like seed folk too. They, they're like a new family that have started in this empty lot, which is now a garden. Florence this doesn't actually participate in the garden very much. I think she says she has arthritis in her fingers, unfortunately, but she does go on walks pretty often. She passes the garden and it reminds her of her childhood. The one way she has helped is she spotted one of those people that was stealing Letitia's tomatoes, Curtis's tomatoes for Letitia, and she yelled at them one day and prevented a tomato theft. <laughs> yeah, she's a feisty one. The chapter, though, is at the end of the book, of course, and it seems that it takes place a few years after the other chapters, a few years after the garden has been um, established. She talks about the first fall watching the plants kind of wither and, and shrivel up and then winter is transforming them into perhaps much like it is here on the blanket of snow and then that green paradise kind of hoping and coming out after the frozen empty lot and, and community members they're often staring into this empty lot they've become used to having the garden as kind of a, a center of the community a focal point in the community that everyone would look at and smile as they walk by Right now, they are not smiling. It's cold, it's miserable, and everyone is patiently waiting through the winter. And even because it's Cleveland, through late April and the final snow showers of the year. And then even as spring approaches, Florence is watching the garden, walking by it, and she's not seeing a lot of activity. She thinks to herself, maybe, maybe they're not going to plant this year. But then one day, she sees a young girl, probably Kim, with her little trowel and a bag of lima beans. And Florence feels that this is this is a garden returning for the spring. It's here again. It's like a cycle, a loop back, and we're back with Kim starting the garden. The final lines of the book describe how Florence sees an old man in a rocking chair. I think she'd seen him earlier in the chapter from a previous season also, mm -hmm. but it's been all winter. They haven't said hi to each other. It's been kind of bleak. Well, with Kim planting the lima bean, Florence and this old man, they see each other and they wave. And that's the end of the book. These community members who wouldn't have waved at each other before probably would have ignored each other, waving to each other. Yeah. Fantastic ending to the book. Absolutely. All right, Joellen, <laughs> we finished up the book and now we're going to talk about some big questions that are going to help us unravel some of the more complicated ideas related to the book and figure out some of the things the author was getting at. Yeah. So I'm going to take the first one. Okay. Why did the author write this? So when I thought about this question, I thought about those final lines from the book, the ones with Florence waving up at the old man in the window. Like I said earlier, I don't think that kind of thing would have happened. I don't think that she would have taken the moment to wave at the old man had the garden not been created. So the author, I think, wrote this to show the readers the tremendous impact the small act can have. Kim planted that lima bean to honor her father, and now the story's taking place years later, and around that gar around that lima bean, around the garbage fridge, a huge community garden formed. Kim starts the garden, other people support her, it snowballs, it gets momentum, and now the whole community is better off in a hundred different ways. A specific character that I, I know benefited from this and that really, really hits me in the heart was Say Young. Say Young had PTSD because of the attack she had suffered and all the other terrible things that happened. Well, Say Young, because this garden was there, because of this small act by Kim that got everything going, 
her whole life is going to be better from now on. And another small example is Letitia and Curtis. Without the garden, who knows if they would have gotten together as a couple. So the next big question that we should probably discuss are what lesson or lessons are, are many did the author want his reader to learn? And Chris, I really took away the message in this book about working together, looking out for the other guy, looking, even if it falls in the garden and you don't even expect it to be there, there's, there's so many people with so many needs, whether they're big or small. And all we have to do is sort of take a little time and look for those people that we can help. Royce with his pitch, pitchfork protector and Curtis, as you mentioned before, and Sam, remember Sam, who was the the fisherman with a net trying to build relationships. He had those kids out there working to get water in the water contest, if you remember that from that chapter. Just relationships, no matter how big or small, uh, like you said, hundreds of different ways that people's lives can be changed for them if, in fact, we just look for them. Seek out help, work together. You'll usually end up producing better and more results than if you went alone. Absolutely. So I, I have a lesson that I pulled from this also. It relates to how many different characters we saw and how they all had similar issues. And the issues were often related to being poor and poverty. So I, I pulled out of this that poverty is challenging, that it's really tough. Think about all the things that these characters had to face, whether they were 12 years old or 80 years old. They have rats running around the neighborhood. There's drug dealers. The government that's supposed to be doing something about it doesn't always do something about it. It is really hard. Despite the different narrators, despite all their different backgrounds, despite where they were born, languages and all that, they all had poverty in common. And I, my takeaway is that, man, it's really hard, regardless of who you are, where you're from. It is really hard. So that was my big takeaway. That it's, it's just always remember how difficult it is for people that don't have as much as we do. Absolutely. It's a great lesson. Our next question is, what did this story remind you of? And I have two. I picked up on the Beauty and the Beast comparison and that we shouldn't judge a book by its cover. How many of these community members looked at their neighbors, looked at these people that they, they saw every day, they passed by them every day, and they just assumed, oh, we have nothing in common or worse or really negative things about the person. Well, just like in Beauty and the Beast, when they assumed uh, that the Beast was this horrible person. Well, he was just stuck in a bad situation. And once the situation changes, changed, everything worked out. Uh, another quick one that I want to go over, but I don't want to spoil the book, is Hoots. Because in Hoot, a small movement is started by just one or two characters that ends up making a huge impact. I know that's a popular book for this age group. So if you've read Hoot, you probably know the connection. I have a connection that that's just a really hopeful feeling. I think going through seasons makes you realize that you're not always just going to be stuck in the gloom of winter. And, you know, take it back to what you said about poverty and the challenges of life. Yes, they are hard and they are there, but a garden gives us that hope that one day when the winter has passed and the little seed gets enough sun and enough light, it's going to emerge through the ground and grow into something. And I've felt that connection doing our, our community garden at school because just a little tiny seed can grow and I can fill up a bag of spinach and take it to those who need it. It's not a big deal, but it really gives me that feeling of um, hope springs eternal, that cycle of the year again. Nothing, nothing is hopeless if we just hold on to that and then do what we can to keep it going and keep it growing. It's a little, little mushy for you, Chris, but it's just a, and this book really gave me that feeling like we can do this as hard as it is we can do this and we are doing it so thanks for letting me read it with you <laughs> yeah and i don't i don't think that's mushy at all i think in the first episode i said you were the person i thought of when i thought of seed folks because you're a seed folk and i thought about the community garden that you made so that's that's awesome that so many things reminded you of your own community garden experiences to the book all right, we got one more. The final big question is, how will this story affect the way you think and act in the future? Mm -hmm. So my mind went to that situation with Amir and his customer. You might remember that a year before the Amir's chapter takes place, a customer came into Amir's store and gave him an attitude and was mean. 
And when a year later, when they met in the garden, the other character tried to make an excuse to Amir. Well, back then I didn't know it was you. So that's, that's my big takeaway. You don't know the bus driver or the kid sitting next to you or the person that's checking out your groceries. And you're probably never going to know these people, but think about seed folks from now on when you think about the way you think about them and the way that your brain goes when you see someone else. You're never going to get to know these people, but if you did, it might be like the book where you find that you have a lot more in common than you thought. All the people running around you that you might think, I don't know that guy. I want to stay away from him or they don't know anything about me. Just like the characters in the book, they thought that there was nothing in common. Well, you might have something in common. One of the most, one of the biggest things that everybody had in common was from this book was that people are just trying to live good lives and be good people. I think that sometimes when you have bad days or you're unfamiliar with the situation or you're unfamiliar with people, it's very easy to see the people around you as bad or different or mean and immediately assume that you're right. And that's how it is. Just like Amir and the old lady. Back then, she didn't know it was him, but it was him. If she knew him, she would know what kind of person he was and wouldn't, wouldn't have treated him that way. So to sum it up, the, the bare minimum version of this is just at least simply don't be mean to people or dismiss them because they're different from you. You don't know what struggles they're facing or their priorities or their goals. Uh, and you might find that a lot of the struggles and goals that they have are similar to yours. Joellen, that is going to wrap up. Seed folks, thank you so much for doing it with me. Chris, it has been my pleasure. Thank you so much for including me in this fantastic thing. Absolutely. I just, I'm, I'm so glad that I picked you. You did a wonderful job. And listeners, thank you so much for joining us as well. We hope you enjoyed reading the book with us. Go ahead and check out some of the other stuff I have on the channel if you want to do another read along with us. And again, I hope you pulled something from Seed Folks. And I hope that some of the lessons we talked about in this episode, you apply to your real life because that's one of the main reasons we read books to learn lessons that we can apply to our real lives. Thank you very much. We will see you later. Bye.